shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit. Yeah. Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Okay. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not, not even on my dad walk on. Man, I didn't think it was gonna happen, man. But this boy, he he he, he pulled up on us, man. And, I know. And, 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 and what, hey, man, I'm gonna tell you something. Your family once we get you in here, say. Oh yeah, I'm here. I'm, I'm right here. Say Thomas in the building, man. Dunk Masters is here, man. Oh yeah, city to city, state to state, y'all are arguing. Man, <laughs> I love your energy, man. Oh yeah, I gotta do it. And you know what, man? When I met you, you laid back, but when you come, hey, you come alive, I watch I your film. Turn it on. I I got got to turn I it on. Else, I got to turn it on. This boy, you get him going, he ain't just like them chefs. It take him a little time to get going. Once he get going, he can't stop him. You I, know? Like, I like to bet that money. I like to talk about that money talk. That's I can do. tell. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you like to do. Okay, I know you grew up in, well, no, you were born in Atlanta. Savannah, Georgia. Savannah, Georgia. Yeah. I, keep, I call it everywhere Atlanta. Anywhere uh-huh. in Georgia is Atlanta to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you, you went to South Carolina, right? Yep, yep. Why, did you, why did you go to South Carolina? So so my mother was uh, originally from Hardyville, South Carolina, but she right. was teaching in Savannah, Georgia. Okay. So I was born in Savannah, Georgia, and then we moved to Hardyville when I was uh, about two or three years old. Two or three? Yeah, the Hardyville. So you don't remember Savannah. nothing about Georgia? Nah, yeah, yeah, but we went back. So yeah, after, okay. I, after I went to Hardyville for a couple of years, we stayed there, and then I continued to go to school in Savannah, Georgia. Okay. So I was down in Savannah, Georgia until I was about 12 years old, mm-hmm. and then we moved to Orangeburg, South Carolina. Uh, that's when I really started messing with the cars and all the stuff. Which one do you like better? What's one? At um, Georgia or... South Carolina. I like Orangeburg. I Why? like I, I like because that's what that's what made me. You know what I mean? Yeah. The country. So you you know what I mean? Just different resources in Orangeburg and learning how to do different things. And in Savannah's a pretty bigger city, so mm-hmm. you have a lot of other stuff going on. They got colleges and stuff there too, like Orangeburg, but it's just a different atmosphere from Orangeburg. To and it Savannah. was your uncle who introduced you to the cars, right? Oh yeah, my my uncle Buggy. Uncle Buggy. Yeah, so my uncle Buggy showed me about the cars. He used to take us to mud races, boat races, horse races. All different kind of stuff in the country. Wow. Yeah. How old were you the first time you raced? I actually started racing when I was about eight years old. But we raced dirt bikes and goat carts. Oh, that's so, what you raced? Yeah. In the beginning, we used to race uh, goat carts. They call them a yard cart uh-huh. with, a, with a little five horsepower motor on the back. Mm-hmm. And we, we would race those. Um, Do you remember the feeling you felt the first time you raced? Exhilarating. <laughs> <laughs> it gave you chill, bro. It's, it's like a high, you, you know? Nah, scared of what? Scared I wanna, of wreck out? Nah, I'm trying to win. Yeah, I like to go fast. Because, see, my cousin is the same age as me. We're about three months apart. Uh-huh. So, my uncle's son is, is my cousin, Todd. Me and him is the exact same age, just three months apart. So, anything he had or we had together, we always shared and we raced and we just were real competitive. You're an adrenaline junkie. I love it. So, you'd I be jumping it. out of planes and everything? Not yet, but I would, we've been parasailing. See, <laughs> like, oh yeah, yeah. Now me and my lady travel the world, and we go do different things, uh-huh. like ride camels and parasail and ride boats. But go camels scuba diving. is camels that's is dope. safe. Scuba yeah. diving is safe. I'm talking something that's gonna make your heart jump out of Bungie your body, jumping. like bungee jumping, like, parasailing. Like, yeah, we we did. And matter of fact, we, I'm not, now I'm training to get my pilot license. So Are she you actually, serious? yeah, she actually bought me some classes to go get my pilot license. So we just flew that's some cool. some planes and stuff like that. Yeah, I, you know what I mean. She she want to make sure I'm well rounded and I like it. She like the adventure just like me. So this is what we like to do. That's dope, oh, that's man. Dope. Oh yeah, that's dope. Yeah. You, you, is she learning too? I don't know. She she in the back seat. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right now she say she want to learn. So you know, I'm, I'm we with it. Okay. That's so cool. is this? I mean, you guys are like touring. Y'all going around like city to city, state to state, all the country to country. We Do all over the place. Where's the furthest place y'all went away from uh, South Carolina? Morocco, Africa. Whoa. Oh, yeah, we was in Fez. You, you took some cars over there? Nah, nah, yeah. We went over there to go observe the land and see what's okay. going on, and then we're going to eventually take the cars over there, put them on a boat or a plane, and, you know, just take them take over them there. Over what there? was the thing you loved the most about over there? In Morocco? Uh-huh. The food is real clean. Really? And plus, they only eat whatever is in season. So a lot of places you go, they don't have refrigerators over there. A lot of people don't know that, but in Morocco, you only eat what's in season. That's so if dope. they got strawberries or potatoes this month, that's what you go eat. But if they if they not, you're not going to be able to eat that three months from now because something else is in the season. Right, that's, that's fruit-wise, but like yeah. as meat, you get it all the time, right? Yeah, you do get it all the time, but it does taste different in different seasons, they say. In so, the meats? Yeah, so really? like chicken, like I a lot of stuff we that. ate over there was like chicken, uh, we had a lot of beef, goat, stuff like that. Because mm-hmm. like in Jamaica, the same thing goes where fruits are concerned. You only get like the Jamaican apples certain time of the year, mm-hmm. the guineps, the mangoes certain yep. time of the years and stuff like that, the same thing. Yeah, the same way, just over there. And over there, you got to go on a market and the market is like an alley. Mm-hmm. So it's an alley where they might have camel meat on this side, then they right. might have fish over here, then they might have figs over there, but you just got to pick whoever got the best. But Was, nah. it, was that the first time you had goat meat? 
Nah, 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 nah. nah I, ate, I ate a lot of golden stuff when I was uh, younger, and plus I ate it in Savannah, and when I lived in the islands, I stayed in Barbuda for a year mm. also. Yeah, because my father from uh, Barbuda. Okay, but you know this how everybody cook it different though. Oh yeah, yeah, it tastes real different. So over there, they they cook everything like in a tarjan, like they, like clay pots where they uh -huh. heat them with coal and stuff under uh -huh. it. But nah, it's real, it's real, real good. All the food over there is real good. Okay, that's cool. Man, so, you, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, 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 you go because you seem like you're on a roll over there. <laughs> I just know when I get him, I'm gonna have him. You know, you are, so you better get it on done. So I know <laughs> you're. I, I know you're. Um, you're. Um, one of your parents was a teacher and one was a chef. Yeah. So I can imagine all the type of meals that you would get growing up. Yeah, so at, in the beginning, so my father was around until I was about eight years old. Mm -hmm. And then from there, he left and my uncle took over. So about, I learned some of the stuff with the chef and all the stuff that he did, but then he was gone. So my, my uncle Buggy, who raised me doing the cars and the mechanic stuff and discipline and all that kind of stuff, self-motivation is what I learned from him. I love the fact you still had a male role model in your life because a, oh, lot, yeah. of, a lot of boys, mm -hmm. when their fathers step out, they are missing that and the mother yeah. normally try to step in and be that father figure. But sometimes mm -hmm. it, you can't really always have a female nah. teaching a man how to be a man nah. oh, nah. it's you gotta, hard yeah you gotta have a man to teach a man and that's the right. thing with my uncle so my uncle only had the one child and, and then he took me as, right. a, as a second child and I took more to what he did so he's a you know he's an entrepreneur he does housing and construction work and build cars and sell cars but a lot of stuff you tell me just work with what I got so where did your dad go was what? Where did your dad go? Oh, he just he left. Like, he just, you know, I guess he was weak or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just know I'm not going to do that, go that route. You know what I'm saying? I'm good. doing, I got five kids myself and I take care of my children. Did he ever come back around at nah, all? Nah, I talk to him every now and then. But, oh, you know, so he, but yeah, he just. Too he much just pressure. Said, yeah, he couldn't handle <laughs> it. But you know what I'm saying? So that's why I said my uncle took a lot and he showed me what to do and mm -hmm. we, he made I, it happen. I think that'd be God, man. God make things happen a certain way. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, y'all yeah. could probably were better at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way I look at it, right? Yeah, like yeah. The, right, my uncle, my mm. uncle took me from my daddy, and yeah. I no lie, and kept me, didn't he? You yeah. hear that story all the time oh, yeah. because they uh, they got into it over. We him. got into a fight, yeah. uh, argument. Me and my dad and my yeah. uncle, and I ended up with my uncle, man. Oh, I'm not the same. My, that's the same thing I had with my uncle. For real? See, my uncle a third three, a third degree black belt. He wasn't trying to. <laughs> so like my, my uncle buggy, he like right now he's seventy years old, but he still could do fifty push ups. Ooh, no, yeah, yeah, that that for me. Real. yeah, yeah, yeah. He that all the way shit, me. but he taught wow. me discipline, structure, and that's stuff good. like that. Uh, that you know what I'm saying? Was he military or penitentiary background? It wasn't none of that. He just was karate, kung fu, Joe crazy. Oh, man. <laughs> man. Boy, man. But Bruce Lee, man, I see that every Saturday. Look at Lee, Bruce, bro, Bruce, Bruce Lee. I grew up watching him all the yeah, time. Yeah, Bruce Lee, all the different karate movies. Yeah, all you know, can't read. Yeah, you just got to read the words on the bottom Yeah, screen. they talk like this. Oh, what? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> and then the new words come out. Nothing. But he'll slap fire at you. <laughs> you get he do something stupid. Oh, he'll slap oh, fire. Oh, you go get it, man. Oh, yeah, he could do that. So, so after you, after you, um, you were racing in those buggies and everything. When did you start to get into real cars? Well, by the age of about, about 16. So about 16 years old, I was working at a car wash called Happy Jays in Orangeburg, mm -hmm. South Carolina. And all the street boys just come through there with their Chevys and they clean cars and stuff like that. And they always call me young boy. They be like, young boy, come clean my car. Young boy, you know what I'm saying? So like I was just a hustler. So I be like, well, them the boys with the money. So if I clean their car good, they would give me a good tip. Mm -hmm. So like I clean their car real good, you know what I mean? Make sure I shine it up real good. But I was always a, a engine junkie. So mm -hmm. I would always part the hood and look. So I'd be like, man, I got to clean the motor off for you real quick. <laughs> but I'd be looking to see what stuff they got on it. Then i have a notepad in my pocket, write down what parts they got, and then i get the magazines and read about it. And then i tell, talk to my uncle about it. But then I started getting that because I seen them have the clout and the girls and all that stuff mm -hmm. with their cars. Mm -hmm. So they like they would wear jewelry and stuff, but I would always see them pull up in the car, and they always had some nice-looking females with them. And that's what attracted me to that, that car to stuff. The car yeah. Stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when was the first time you actually built your own car? I started building my own car when I was about 17 years old. 17? Yeah. How long did it take you? It took me about, till I was about 21, about three, four years. Three, four years? That's yeah. how long? So, like, now if you had to build a car, how long it takes you? 60 days. Six <laughs> yeah, yeah, that boy done got good at yeah, that. Yeah. Because of all of the things you had to put into it compared to then. Yeah, but it's just like the team, my resources. So my resources are different now. Mm. So before, you know what I mean, I really had no money, no connection, right. no resources. But now I got a good team, and they helped me put cars together a lot quicker. We talk about it, put it together. It don't take that long. Well, I can tell you right now, man, being being one that's uh, uh, been watching the movement, man, when I first seen Dunk, I, I, I heard of it from Florida. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. now, yep. now, you got y'all down in the Carolinas, the Carolinas. man. Yep. Who came up with this? And, and, and who? It, wait a minute. 
we know that that Florida came. Yeah, over they came. With, it came from Miami. But, came but from what? What? Who? Who? Who did it the best? Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> South Carolina. No, no, like, like, what him. made you? Say wait a minute. Him. Huh? When did y'all so called take the title? So, so back in about 2015, with this the car that I got now, it's called the Z06, right? Okay. So mm-hmm. it came out in about 2013. I debuted the car. 2014, I debuted the car. So with social media, TV show, all the other stuff, and the push, and by me knowing the marketing, the analytics. I started pushing the the brand of in and out custom my shop, so and then I went down to Florida, call out the whole state of Florida, and told anybody down here if y'all want to race, I'm in y'all city, let's get it. Uh-uh. So by me knowing that one time of the year is called MLK weekend, Martin Luther King weekend down mm-hmm. in Florida, they bring all the new dunks out. That's like a dunk holiday. So all the new dunks they've been building all year, Martin Luther King holiday. That's when they bringing them out. So we already knew this. So me and the team went down there. I call out the whole state of Florida, the whole city, everybody, tell them, let's get it. One and everybody fella, came out. Yeah, everybody came out. One fella stepped up to the plate. I bust his ass for that cash, and that shit been almost and ever that, since. That's running the quarter. Yeah, quarter running mile. Running the quarter mile. Yep, I and, got them. And, and you killing them with the rim. Now, that, let's, yeah. just, let's break down this dunk yeah. movement, because we in Texas. With the big wheels. Yeah. With the big wheels. Not wheel. everybody know about yeah, yeah, dunk. Yeah, 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 yeah. This the big wheel. What well, hobby? So, back then, I had 28-inch wheels on, on my car. So, right now, I got 26, but back then, I had 28-inch uh, wheels on my car. So, down. why you go down? Because I made a little bit more power and the difference in the tire size. So, I, I wanted a more of a tire choice so I can put okay. a thicker tire on it. That's why I went down. You guys uh-huh. changed the game, man. When I oh, yeah. first started seeing quarter runs, it was just slicksters and basically running a quarter of a mile. And these tires was pretty much spec, just like yeah. the racers mm-hmm. would do. And they would run it off, you know, burn them off and mm-hmm. then take a run at it. But y'all changed it to the rims, man. Oh, yeah, big and rim. when was the first time you seen that method even happen? It wasn't. So the, the so the thing was, we came about it was called Fast and Flashy Racing, right? Okay. So we, I wanted to keep it to where we can go to the club, stunt, holler at the girls, whatever the case may be, VIP park, and they be in the club, stop popping that trash. We going to the street. Let's get it on. You know what I'm saying? Don't chain no wheels, no nothing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We fresh cologne, jewelry on. We yeah, ready. Yeah. Get your car. Let's get it. But see, with me coming from a racing background, I understood suspension, shocks, and all that stuff. So like, I was beating these boys for five years in a row. Like, I don't want couples of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Woo! <laughs> Taking advantage yeah, of your boys, yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's tearing them up because I was in with the company. So I knew people who made shocks, transmission, converters. Oh, I, under, got, I understood the engineering. You got the suspension of, right. Yeah, yeah. So I understood the engineering of, of the vehicle. And you know what I mean? Just street boys. They got the cars. They got a little bit of paper. They think they go do something. I slapped fire at them in every city. So we would go from, you know, we went to Florida, South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Iowa, D.C., New York City, all over the United States. We document it. You can you can check it out on GDAW 803 YouTube, and we document it for the years. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I knew. I just I just learned it, and I knew it, and Listen, it came man, from just racing on the wheel. I got some that. homies, and that's all they do is race. And one thing I can't say, because you niggas out there wrong, and I'm going to say wrong because – uh, somebody might come up short. Nigga yeah. might get to talking, bumping his gums. Yeah, yeah. The nigga ain't got the money. Oh, yeah. Next thing you know, you try and figure out, say, nigga, where you go? Uh-huh. I, give me an instance. Go and give it up. <laughs> 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 hey, it'll happen, dog. I it'll know happen. it doesn't happen. But see, it, it'll happen, but with them, with me, you know what I'm saying, we always will pull up three, four people, and we erase them. They don't want to get the money up. Then I just ain't fucking with them no more. You ain't going to take the car or nothing? Yeah, nah, see, you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to tell them all that. Some repercussions. He ain't gonna tell the truth. We we handle it. We get it handled. We make sure everything's okay. But you know what I'm saying. We, we make we make sure everything is good to go. But, you know what I mean? We don't like that. We we like to be you know what I'm saying. Men of men of men. You know what I'm saying. I get it's it, man. But dollars. I just know because I've been out there at the uh, horse track. I've been at the dog fights when that when that mm-hmm. was long years ago. Don't you come looking for me, nigga? That was a yeah. long time ago. <laughs> and then I've been you know I've been a lot of places. Oh, yeah, I, oh, yeah. I've been to the horse tracks and and these niggas just ain't gonna act right with the money. That's oh, yeah, the part yeah. I'm. Yeah. Waiting on because yeah. I'm a troublemaker. Uh-huh. I'm looking to see when the problem gonna happen. Yeah. But the niggas gonna mess up somewhere in this uh-huh. whole transaction. Oh, yeah. This is not the bank, nigga. This ain't <laughs> Nobody signed no application, mm-hmm. but it's an adrenaline rush. You, the pitch I got a Tony at the house. I saw. Where he, I, where he, I thought mm-hmm. you was with us that no, day. No, I was not. I'm taking uh, you. I'm gonna take you over here <laughs> tomorrow. I've never been you to going a tomorrow? Oh, I'm, gonna take tomorrow. You. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna bring you through tomorrow. You ain't got to worry. I promise okay. you. I yeah. thought that we've been together 20 years. I thought for damn sure yeah. she had been to a race. Don't with get me. in trouble now. This no I'm not it. it wasn't uh, me. Somebody else. Don't you mess up 20 years, man. Look here, Doc Master. You ain't. Don't come in there with. 
<laughs> so we going tomorrow. Though. I'm yeah, coming yeah. out there, man. I just like I said. Do I need air muffs? Is it that uh, loud? Is it like loud? Loud? Nah, they got no. some calls that's loud, but it's, it's a lot of street calls. It's yeah, it's dope. Loud. Yeah, you yeah, have a good time. You have a good time. Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. So, so I want to know because these cars, when I looked them up, they looked really good, yeah. right? How dangerous is racing? Like, do people wreck out? The, yeah, they do, but that's and that's a lot of things I'm starting with the NDRA. So I have an association for big racing on big wheels called mm. National Don't Racing Association. Right, NDRA. And the first thing is, is the uh, safety. Okay. So we want to make sure the cars are safe by putting different things on the car, like lugs mm. and studs and U-joints and seat belts and stuff like that, make it mandatory for them to race because a lot of people don't want to put that in these in these show cars. But when they start going but 9, But if you're racing, seconds, you need to have that on. Exactly. Then I'm trying to make sure they understand that, but come from this culture of racing, they acting like that's too, they too cool to put a seat belt on. So, mm. you know what I mean? We make the stuff mandatory, which they do it, and then the track stand behind it, and they make it happen. So, yeah, we have had a couple different wrecks, but nothing too major. Okay. But, you know what I mean? That's good. That, when I think about NASCAR mm -hmm. racing and all of that, you yeah. know, they be having the wrecks, but they have all of the cages and oh, everything yeah. to protect themselves. Yeah. And when I see your cars, and I'm like, those look too nice to race. Like, who would yeah. Who'd want to risk getting it scratched? Yeah, yeah. Much yeah. less wrecked out. They got that money. Don't even it, trip. That's a lot of money they to them yeah, yeah, yeah. They got that bread. This is what we doing. <laughs> you know, this is a man thing. That's why j you got to just step back and let us do our thing. <laughs> so, What's the most prized car that you have in possession? Like, well, Yeah, the most you spent on a car building it. Oh, with a Z06? Well, that, that car, I'd have spent money over... Like how much? Seven, eight years, maybe. I how much know. you think you spent? You don't even want to try to even guess. I don't even know. I ain't telling a lie. You know what I'm saying? I, I know the motors in these cars thirty, forty thousand. That's what I was going. Yeah, you know what I mean. The engines, the the wheels, six, seven thousand. Transmissions, ten, fifteen thousand. So. One thing we always debate on because I love old school cars, right? Mm -hmm. You debate because huh? he got me. He got me into. But we always talk about because I see a lot of people buy them and trick them out. Yep. But we always say it takes away the value of your car whenever mm. you trick them out. So, like, why do people do that when it's not going to be worth You put ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 in there doing all this other stuff and not mm. keeping it original, but it's not making the value go up. Oh, yeah, it is now. It so, is, yeah, it's so different. Like, yeah, so, like, now, by me traveling around the United States and doing stuff just like mm -hmm. I'm doing today, is the value has grown tremendously. Okay. Plus, so, like, like a regular clean old school you can get for about thirty grand. You probably could have bought that same one $10,000. Me and him talked about that at the practice yeah. show. Yeah, so, like, it's... All the stuff has changed now because of social media. Okay. So now people are doing old schools like two hundred fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, like Rick Ross, shout out to Rick Ross. Yeah, shout out Rick Ross. Right. Yeah, they build an old school quarter million dollar old schools. He'll say it in the song, but he really spends a quarter million dollars on the old school yeah. every summer. He might do three or four of them just because he feel like he it. like doing them. Yeah, but they and then you and can it actually, holds the value. Yeah, because you now we're connected with Barry Jackson and Meekum Auto Auction, and they understand the value. So okay. in the beginning, they never really they never, appraised these right. cars, but now we can get insurance on them now and all that. Stuff Stuff, thank you to the uh, exposure of social media to where you can actually get a quarter million dollars for old school and get it insured also. Okay, I was always wondering because I see people do that and yeah. I'm like, you wasting your money. Why are you doing all? And they'll just tell me because we love doing what we do. Yeah. They don't care if the value goes up or not. They just uh, love to have a, a unique, clean car. Yeah, but it has to be done by a reputable shop. You can't just okay. go to Tom Jerry down the corner <laughs> yeah. and spend 10 bands. Like, nah. Right. It got to be documented and okay. be done by a reputable shop. Yeah, also, yeah, 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 yeah. You guys, man, like I said, what's the craziest... Uh, Car that you found on the best deal? Oh shoot! Yeah, I done, yeah. I done find, I done find a convertible like a dunk like I got right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. I done bought one of those for about three thousand dollars. That's and, good. And right now they 20, 20 30 grand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and you did like that here recently. Years. And what yeah, kind yeah. was that? A seventy one Impala. So, yeah, wow. I found one about three thousand dollars. Yeah, that's a damn good See, deal. I mean, oh, yeah. The one thing I always say, I always tell myself. Cause I'm looking for a Chevy. I I wanna Ooh. I wanna drop top. Cause uh -huh. he have one. He yeah. have a Malibu. So I want a drop top. So uh -huh. we can ride side by side. Oh yeah, that's how it's supposed to be. That's right. understandable. Yeah. So, but I want to restore mine. I I don't want to buy it already fixed. Uh -huh. I wanna I wanna fix it up. Cause yeah. I saw him do it. Uh huh. And I tell him, I said, we need to ride through the country because you can't find that in the no, city. No, 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 you no. got to go to the country. Somebody yeah. don't know what they have. One mm -hmm. of old cars out in the field somewhere. Yeah. We're like, oh, that's it. Tell him about the one you found. It, it was how much? The one you, last the night. The one you showed me on the phone. Was it one hundred twenty thousand? That was twenty thousand, but it was out of. Oh, I think it was Ohio. Like, like I be looking at the rust because I know yeah, rust yeah, in certain places. Yeah, so don't uh, mention that. It's nah, rust. It's so like where y'all at? Texas, Nevada. Uh, you know what I mean? Somewhere up in there. Anywhere that you're a little bit farther. Yeah, from mm -hmm. the oyster, the moisture. You don't want that. That's right. So you know what I mean? You don't want a lot of cars that been painted a lot of time neither. Mm -hmm. But I do. A, I talk about a lot of that. But you can give me a call and we can put something. Yeah, 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 for yeah, sure. Yeah, because I be, I be looking online because you have all these Facebook pages you can go on now and find them. Gonna get no, got. Gonna get got. Me and Lil Kiki talked about. 
about that the other yeah, week. He yeah. got he said he paid how much? Almost it seemed like an astronomical number that he told me. Mm. It might have been three hundred thousand or two hundred for an old school. He yeah. never got. <laughs> now, these <laughs> niggas will get you. Oh yeah, no, you Kiki, say, shout out to Lil Kiki. He yeah. showed up, told me that. I said, nigga, you, I I got to see mine. Yeah. Nigga, I'm coming to see you. <laughs> yeah, it don't cost do. but a ticket, nigga, to drive. Yeah. I fly up there. That's how you gotta do. <laughs> that's so, that's I see so. you had a convention, and it wasn't the one I met you at. Uh-huh. After that, it was some kind of car convention. I seen you. Uh, PRI. What was so, that all so about? So that's the performance racing industry. So that's the business side of racing. Okay. So actually with, with uh, PRI is where all the different uh, shops, well, not the shops, the manufacturers go. So like Moza, Cali's, Nitrous Outlet, all the different ones that that build the actual products that go on the race cars, that's for them. So it's a trade show just to get knowledge and stuff like that. So it's just like how the magic show where you can go to the yeah, manufacturer yeah. and talk to everybody. PRI just on the racing side. So they had me doing some talking and explaining to people what actually big wheel racing is and how far what is coming. And the kind of crowd that I bring. So another thing, what I do is racetracks. So like you'll see tomorrow, uh, we probably have five to eight thousand people at, at a racetrack, and they don't really. A lot of people don't get that many people. Yeah. So the president of PRI, shout out to Dr. Jamie Meyer. So he was like, come to the convention and can explain to people how you get these people there, how to market, how to do this with these different brands to a different demographic. So you know what I mean. So that's what that's what my specialty is, and I'm a I'm a I work with a PRI. I'm a brand ambassador for them. I marketed a lot of stuff for them mm-hmm. to our demographic of people, so they understand it's just more than going to buy a race car part that you can actually get sponsored by these people. You can learn more about it, and you can ask more questions than what they. You know what I mean? What they normally used Say, to. Did you think that you'd ever be the face of Dunk Masters? Like I, I don't, you couldn't have done yeah. 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 yeah nah, I never thought about it, but you know what I mean? Just like now, I got a, I got an app, a video game app yeah. with my actual games on. I got a TV show on Motor Trend Advice. I you see. know what I mean? I got partnerships and collaboration with different major corporations, million dollar corporations. It feels good. You know, Do I they reach blessed. out to you to do yeah, all of these? A, a or lot or of do people, you reach out to them? Yeah, they reach out to me, but like, you know what I'm saying? I pray every day. Yeah, I pray every day. I believe in God. So, you know Definitely. what I'm saying and that's what and it just continue to come so all I do is just keep walking through open doors and just make sure I educate the people the right way where does the name Dunk come from and who created that name see in Miami I, t- I talked to a couple people down there in Miami some of the OG's down there Vito No Shake shout right. out to Vito and Murph down there in Miami They a lot of people tell me they got Dunk come from acting a donkey in a car Really? So they like every time you pull out the old school, you act a donkey, you get fresh, you that play your music. Sense. And that's I didn't what they, know. I'm like, donk, where did that come from? Yeah, what that's what, so that's what they told me about it. You know what I'm saying? And, so and that's, that's what you're rolling with. Oh, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they they the OGs. You know what yeah. I'm saying? They don't want to pay the way for, for for me to do this. What I'm doing today? That's true. Oh yeah. And who gave you the name Dunk Master? A uh, young boy out of Orangeburg because I always had old school cars and I hooked them up and I always would do something that nobody ever did. So like this first car, the Z06, it actually had a six-speed Tremec transmission in it with a turbo made 900 horsepower. I'm the first one to ever do that. And I had a Corvette interior in the car, a 2013 with kangaroo leather in it. Mm. I'm the first one to ever do that. So that's when they, and then a young boy came, he said, man, he kept looking at the car. He looked at the car, he's like, you... You the dog master. <laughs> and when he said it, he said it was so much, you know what I mean, so much feeling that everybody liked it. And I was like, well, it sounds good. You know what I'm saying? Man, I'm the dog master is here, but wait a minute, man. <laughs> How many of these rappers done try to get that car in these videos, man? Oh, no. I'd have had it in uh, Megan Stallion, Bank Road, I Freddy, told you. I know how to ask these yeah, questions. These niggas love the dog master. Yeah, 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 yeah. I talked to Slim Thug, Bumby a lot about different things. Yeah, Slim Thug be having them cars, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. We talked yeah. We talked a lot, a lot about that, about the cars mm-hmm. and all different stuff. But they don't race them like him. No, they, they ride, they nobody, they nobody any of the rappers yeah. racing them like uh, trying to get into nah, it. so they want to get into the NDRA. So that's another reason why I got it because just like NASCAR, where they got the big sponsors, mm-hmm. Lowe's and Walmart and all that stuff like that. See, Slim Thug and Bumpy, they want to do the same thing. They want to be a part of yeah, it. Yeah, so they're like, what we can do. So I was talking to like Killer Mike, uh, yeah, Carlos, Miller, Killer Mike. Yeah, Carlos Miller. Yeah, Carlos Miller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout out them boys. Yeah, so like I do some of their cars too. So they want to do it where they can just have a team and then we just do big wheel racing so it's something for us. Yeah, oh, so for our yeah. culture, so for right. our culture demographic. And that's what they want to do. And I, you know what I mean? I'm appreciative too. And I just appreciate the opportunity. Boy, you hey, black guys. folks. Boy, boy, y'all something else. You black oh, yeah. folks. Boy, y'all something else. You <laughs> niggas <laughs> will take something and spin it in a minute and make it something else. Mm-hmm. Boy, yeah. y'all something else, man. You gotta put it together. Listen, man. I say, man, I don't know. You never know what y'all gonna do next. Nah, <laughs> it, it's, no, it's never ending. That's why I say you got to pray every day. You know what I'm saying? You, you gotta to pray it. every day, that's man. That's all it is. Do you, do, okay, 
the guy I seen, you said 85 South, uh, yeah. Country C. Carlos Miller. What? No, I'm saying Country C, oh, yeah, the guy yeah. that was with you. Yeah. Uh, are you guys still communicating? Nah, or? he cool. You know what I mean? He made his decision on what he want to do, and I made mine. So he cool. Y'all not yeah. rocking no more. Nah, I ain't doing nothing with him. He cool to me. It's though. over. I yeah, I ain't got no pressure with him. He already me. Uh, were you racing? Oh me? Do, yeah, do I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I just got to figure you out. You ain't scared to race these people. I'm not never Nobody. No, 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 no. Anybody can get it. Anybody. You see what the cup say right now? But don't you think Have about you gotten it, beaten? Though? Huh? Have you ever gotten beaten? Yeah, we lost. I, I lost a couple times, but it, I won way more than I lost. <laughs> Let me ask you this. People that been in your camp that know what you got and know how you do things, do mm -hmm. you fear that they could go out and pretty much, you know what I'm saying, no, get ready for it. <laughs> yeah, nigga. <laughs> do you feel like they've they they, they they've watched long enough that uh -huh. they could come back? And, and replicate? And, exactly. Is that what you're saying? You know, like and, the and, movie. And, 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 like and, replicate and, what you have and, and try they to. Can, they can try, but who's sitting right here, though? <laughs> exactly. Who, who, who got the cool? Oh, hey, I nigga. Sure I know, know, they they listen, man. I've been I lose no damn money messing nah, with you tomorrow. Nah, don't no, just bet what you feel. You know what I mean? No, don't bet with no, you. No, I'm betting with you. Oh, yeah, that's all I do, too. And I if I lose, you. that's on you. That's your money. No, man. I bet my own money. I, I bet be, nobody I own money. Hey, I, I bet my own Boy, money. Boy, you be cutting up, bro. I oh, seen yeah. you now. Oh, yeah. See, I didn't know that day when I re went research that yeah. time. I said, oh, he be cutting up out there, them damn oh, races. Nah, you got to put it together. That's what the energy at. Yeah, yeah. That's what I said. You'll see a lot of that tomorrow. So, like, like tomorrow we got we got roll racing, we got uh, grudge racing, and we got match racing, and we also have a big car show also. So you know what I mean? It's gonna be a lot of different things out there. We gonna what's, have motorcycles. What's the, time? the time is from ten a.m. to ten p.m. Matter of fact, wow. my girl, baby okay. girl, Florida, she's bringing her thirty-two inch motorcycle out there. So she got a, a Harley Davidson with a thirty-two inch wheel on it with wow. about a twenty thousand watt sound system on it. So she gonna have that out there tomorrow, and she and some people bringing some bikes and stuff out there tomorrow for that too. That's so super it's, cool. Yeah, it's gonna be a different array of things. It's, it's yeah, a whole plethora like, of something. That's you see, like, I love you bikes, but I like what you call crotch rockets. That's what oh, y'all yeah, yeah. call it up here. We just call it bikes in Jamaica. Yeah, sports bikes, racing bikes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But nah, he prefer for me to do them hard because those are safer. They yeah, are they safer. Cruise. I don't need safer. you doing nothing. I hear about me you know jeopardizing my life. I remember, <laughs> I remember the first time I told him I wanted a bike, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden the the trike came out. He's yeah. like, "Oh yeah, you can get anything with three wheels till it's switched." And they had the spiders that look more sporty or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And I said, "Oh yeah, I want that instead of the trike." Uh -huh. He's like, uh-uh, uh-uh, <laughs> you can't get that. <laughs> People like, see uh. that it's lucrative, you know, what you're doing, mm -hmm. and, and, and they see it, They see what, you know, it's a thing, man. It's, it's a lot of white guys that then start trying to do what you guys oh, do. Yeah. So what do you think about that, and do you see a chance of them taking it over? Mm -hmm. They can't take over nothing. We can't give it to them. They got to come talk to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, I be blowing everybody. You know what I'm saying? So the, come talk yeah, to me. the whole thing is I'm the dunk master. The reason they trying to get into it because of what they see me do. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They only can be second place until I do what I do. They can't, you know what I'm saying? They got to copy me to figure out what to do next. So if once my next move is made, I'm two steps ahead every time. So, you so are, yeah, they got to do, they got to, you know what I'm saying? And that's the thing about it. I don't have no bad blood with nobody about it, but I just be upfront about it. You know what I'm saying? The reason y'all want to do this is because you see me doing it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So you can't just come in here and say this is yours. It's not yours. It's, it's, this is what we started. You know what I'm Did saying? Did it surprise you when, it, when you first seen the other cultures start getting into it? Oh, yeah, they do it. But I call them on the phone and say, hey, bro, what you doing? That's what I do. You already And they got to stop? Uh, no, nah, I call them and talk to them and see what's going on. And what they do? They call and talk to me and see what's going on. <laughs> this you know what I'm saying? That's, that's all I do. It's, it's not something that you could just take. You know what right. I'm saying? It's not to take because it's just more than just racing on big wheels. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just like you said, my voice, my actions, my character. It's a lot of different things that go oh. into what we're doing. It's just not something that you can just take. You know what I'm saying? So, like, somebody come out and say, I'm boss talk 102. What you going to say? You can say, hey, boy, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> hey, exactly. Hey, so they say, hey, don't, no, no, come on, what are you doing? Yeah. That, that's what I do all the time. That's crazy because you just, really, you broke the mode when it come down to the internet, mm -hmm. YouTube, stuff yeah. like that. How did you how did you, how do you move in that in that area of expertise as well? Just understanding mm -hmm. how to deal with, you know, because it's money in all avenues of what oh, you're dealing with. Social media and yeah. everything. So else. how do you how do you move? So, how so do you the, learn? The, the head of design and marketing is media is G Dog. G Dog eight oh three. So he does all this stuff for years. So he actually went to school to okay. for filming and all this stuff like okay. that. So so me and him talk constantly about what to do. So just like his analytics on YouTube, yes. we also we study that 
religiously so we understand it and plus i have people around me that's in that like steve mo my the uh the media fellow you talked to gavin my man yeah 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 so like they you know what i mean we he he got an emmy so steven morrison actually won an oh. emmy for producing with espn for the last 10 years Damn it. Mm-hmm. so the people around me are very well developed and they understand what's going on that's good i don't we don't got no dummies on the team you that's know what i'm saying dope. and that's what it what it takes to get to this level because it's a path nobody has ever taken but it, how you know long did it take you to build that team yeah, so all these people I grew up with. Okay. So yeah, so like we grew up with these people. Hey, and we just did, That's yeah, good. we did different things in life, and then we just came back at, at certain times. That's but, awesome. Yeah. I got I got to talk about the elephant in the room. The time when you had to go and do a little time, oh, yeah. and how how God can change you. Like I say, I've been through a lot the same way. Uh-huh. But when you bump your head and you mm-hmm. get to sit down and you get to think about things for yeah. a minute, how important was that part? And how did it? Affect oh no, nah, I had to put. You it see together. what I'm saying? Oh yeah, so like I got. Uh, had to go sit down for about. I had to sit down for seven months. So they gave me a year, and I had to do seven months out of year state you time. Did, you got what some county time, uh, not state some, time. No, I'm saying, but they had to cur- run some concurrent. Yeah, time yeah, with the yeah, with the county yeah, time. With yeah, the county so, time. yeah, with the county time. So I got I got uh, caught for uh, trafficking marijuana. Over, okay. okay, over 100 pounds of trafficking marijuana. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But after I did all that, I, f- I had to sit down and think about it, put stuff together. But the craziest thing about it, after I did the se- the seven the the months for trafficking marijuana. I had a call from a farm in California that want to put me in the in the cookie store. That's it. That's <laughs> it. So, so you know what I mean. So I, I got my own strand shot of lifting farms and, hey. and all the different cookie stores. Burners on hate <laughs> and you know burner who got the cookie uh, stores and stuff all over California. Yeah, yeah, cookie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So so I, mine was on the top shelf. I got the the dunk master and head approach. I got a new one that's gonna drop Ain't in another some, couple months. Listen, that yeah. we wouldn't ever thought. Nah, when you, you know were locked up, you was trying to rehabilitate. Yeah, you that's what I mean. Making that money. I get a check. I get a check. Making that money. That's why I never went by like rules, man. You can't go mm-hmm. by these rules because you don't know what God rules is for your exactly. life and your destination, man. Mm-hmm. So you, when you were sitting down, what was the most important thing that you thought about that you thought through as you set that time out? Just my, so, my kids, you know what I'm saying? It's trying real, to figure, like, yeah, it's trying to figure out my my children and what they're doing on a daily basis. Like, yeah. is he doing the schoolwork he's supposed to do? You know what I'm saying? Like my daughter, what she could think about her daddy? You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. My kids is real important, so Most I always want to make sure I'm there and they understand what they're doing. So, how like, old are they? I got a I got a five year old, a twins that's eight years old, uh, a ten year old, and a fourteen year old. Okay, so yeah. they, you had them all when you were locked up. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. So they was young. You know what I mean? They're a little bit young because I was yeah. locked up from uh, 2018 to 2019. Okay. Yeah. So now nah, that's what I thought about every day. I make sure I get up and call them on the phone seven o'clock in the morning before they go to school and all that stuff. And I make sure I talk to them as much as I can, write letters and stuff like that. But yeah, that was the what the hardest part is is my kids. So, How hard is it for you to be away from them? Because I know you have to travel a lot mm-hmm. everywhere, yep. and you don't take them with you. Nah, nah. They go a lot of times. They do go. Okay. So yeah, sometimes they go. And then we I have help with me sometimes. You know, my girlfriend mm-hmm. helps me sometimes. Just people, different people help me. But yeah, they come to a lot of the ones that's close. But when I got stuff that I got to do back to back to back, sometimes they go. But then it just depends on. Do where they I'm love going. what you do? What they love it. They like going to school <laughs> and talking trash. They, they just like to go to school and tell them Google my daddy. Just Google my daddy. You know what I'm saying? That's you what know they who like my do. daddy is. That's what they like like thing. Nigga, don't get it twisted, <laughs> nigga. That nigga talk loud. Not only Google or YouTube, that nigga. Yeah. <laughs> I want you to feel him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you they see? That. Do you they see your 14 year old following your footsteps? Or any of them want to follow in your yeah, footsteps? Yeah, my, my 10 year old, he the one who loved the cause. Oh, wow. So, yeah, my 10 year old son's name is Zaya. He loved the cause. Like anything, horsepower, like he can put anything together. Like I just the other day, I was like, finish your homework up. And then I bought my other, said, uh, other son a bigger bed. So he was like, Dad, I can go put that bed together. I like, boy, do your homework. I want to put the bed together. You want to put anything yeah, together. Like, he get the tools. He look at the thing. He knows exactly what to do. Wow. I, I watch it. He put ten it together. years yeah. old. Ten years old. That's he build whole connect sets, all kind of. Oh, he could be ready. Yeah. You need to. You, you need know. to be just giving him stuff to start building. Yeah, he come to the shop with me. He, he, be he know at the tools. Shop. Yeah, he that's be at the good. Shop. Yeah, I bring him to the shop. All because it's stuff. a blessing when you have a child who want to do what you're doing. Oh yeah. Because yeah. that's rare. You don't mm-hmm. always see somebody to finish your legacy. Because when that's the reason why we do what we do to be able to leave a legacy for our children. Oh yeah. But there's so many people I know of that have businesses, flourishing businesses, and mm-hmm. the kids don't want anything yeah, to do yeah, with it. They'll yeah. sell it as soon as you're gone. Yep, yep. And that doesn't make any sense. No. I'm going to get back to these cars. I had a nigga to paint a car for me one time, and I know I told him to change that damn bumper out. And yeah. I think he got some alcohol or something and cleaned it, because that damn thing was clean. He got the rust <laughs> off. <laughs> you know, but I didn't look new. Yeah. Is there a way, is these tricks, is there tricks out there to they take got, shortcuts on on a nigga on some on chrome? Some stuff, but not on no chrome. Trust really. these yeah, niggas, yeah. man. See, I don't like, trust these nah, cats. See, man. like me, I like to redo all my stuff all the time. I don't like using old, old stuff. Old stuff, yeah. yeah, yeah no, I don't on, trust them, man. Nah, a certain kind of way, like how we build a car at the shop. 
if we go do it, we know it's the last shop that is leaving. So okay. mm-hmm. whatever shop touched it before, it don't matter. It's coming from my shop last. I talk to my head mechanic oh, about it all the time. You. Yeah, so like if we got a wire call, if we got to add something to the wire harness, we pull the whole wire harness out, start over brand new because when it leave us, it's on it's us. It's your name. Yeah, it's not on the car the shop before right. us. They don't, they don't forget about that shop. So once it leave our shop, that's how we always do it like that. Do you have anybody that be like, I don't mind you putting the big rims on, we gonna race it, I'm gonna put the engine in it, but I want everything else original on it. Yeah, they try to do that, but, that? It, but it ain't gonna work for me. It's all hard. Nah, you got to do it like this. If, if if we could do it, this is how I got to go. If not, take it to somewhere else. Because you want it done to your yeah, perfection. I, man, I done had people, man, come pick your car up, take it somewhere else, give you your money back. They I, hard-headed, I, ain't they? I get their money back. Hey, come get the car. Here you go. You don't want to even do it. It ain't nah. money. Ain't, money ain't nah, worth nah. it. Nah, nah. Not when I got people calling me every day, all day. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, a lot of people don't understand is is I got, if I got 20 cars at a shop, I got 200 people calling me. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to vet through these 20 people. All right, who got the money for this right here? Hey, bro, you got the money for this? It's time to make a payment. Oh, man, next week. Hey, send a tow truck. Come pick it up. Call the man with the money. <laughs> hey, he got all the money. Hey, let's go to handle this. Damn. Damn. No like liens that. or nothing. You don't even want to lean I on I ain't want to lean. I don't want no lean. Because I'm too big on the internet. They That's get right. Internet. Oh, don't mess it. No, don't mess it. Nothing. Don't mess it. Come get your car. Come get it. Take your money. Take it somewhere else. Wow, that's dope. Wow. How did you perfect the interior? of understanding how to, you know, like get that interior just right. Cause mm-hmm. I looked in that car in, in Vegas yeah. and that interior was right. How do you come up with who's gonna do the material mm-hmm. inside of these cars? Well, Stitch by Slick, he's a long time partner of mine who does okay. the interiors work for a lot of cars I do. So Stitch by Slick out Where of- Where is he out of? He out of Columbia, South Carolina. Okay. Mm-hmm. And see, just like me, me and him started in the yard. So like before Stitch by Slick, he got a big shop now. He do a lot of, he do Snoop Dogg, he do okay. Carlos Miller car, he do okay. a lot of celebrity cars. He do cars everybody do. Car. Yeah, just like I do. So like in the beginning he started in the backyard in a, in a, in a 12 by 12 shed doing seats and stuff and now he do celebrity calls all over the world and you know what I mean he was doing it for a long time he real good at it shout out to Stitch by Slick wow. yeah, he top of the line I bet you you've seen a lot of cars leave for two three years and mm. come back oh yeah that happened all the time don't it oh yeah, yeah. like like somebody else bought it and you like damn that's that same cause you know about you the know business yeah, and all that but see like the car that we built that we do all the way over they sell for a high dollar so like like the last car I did matter of fact a fella sold, sold his Chevy for 120000 okay that we did stitch my shit did the interior we did the motor transmission the paint and everything he had a car for a couple of years, sold it to somebody else, got all his money back, plus more. Yeah, so yeah. like, but because we don't have, I only probably got 30 cars out there that's complete, but I have like a lot of engine swaps and stuff out there like that. But by me traveling so much and doing so much other different things, I don't have a lot of time to build it, so I rely on my team to do a lot. And they do a great job. It's just so many people want me to build their cars, and we don't have so much time. Just depends right. on what their money look like. What that you can build some more shops that you can say, okay, you need to go to my shop over here. You yeah. do, so you can it's accommodate yeah. and that, and everybody. We, yeah, we in the process of, of expanding, expanding like that. Yeah, but it just, it's just it's one thing. You know, just like when you go get something to eat, and it's that restaurant, make it it's good. Hard. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because it's not, you, you're not That's at every right. single shop. Yeah, but we're working gonna come on to it. Where you are. And that's what we just working on SOP and then figuring out the best way to to get it done. So right. we, we working on it. You, the X, you remember that X dude? What was his name? You said uh-huh. yeah, that yeah, that's that what show. I keep thinking of while yeah. you're talking about going through these cars. And then there's another show that I thought you were going to get my car. I know, I, done. I was thinking about I, you it. You know how they come get your car. Oh, yeah. You can drop the dunk. <laughs> <I'm laughs> Sage, maybe yeah. he'll come and, and get it. Back you get your money together because this man can do it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, look, you gotta check. Yeah. You gotta have a check. Y'all ever surprise people and redo their vehicles and stuff oh, yeah, for the yeah. wife? Or, yeah, the, for the yeah. wife. Yeah, yeah the, the wife, wife get it. it. But he too far. Nigga, don't matter. Nigga got a trailer. Yeah. He all the way down in there. What you talking yeah. about? Take, yeah. Put it on the trailer going back. <laughs> Hell. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, um, I don't know, man. So, what's next for, like, because you always trying to come up with different ideas of how to build a car and make it different. Mm hmm. What's the next thing that is in your head that you haven't made to fruition yet? I got some top secret stuff. He ain't gonna get it. I can't tell nobody. Just a little. Just a little. It, it, it ain't never been done before. <laughs> okay, when are you gonna do it? Huh? I'm trying to do it by the next year. By the end of this year, by it should be year. out. The car should be finished by the end of this year. I'm doing so right have now. you started working on it? Oh, so yeah, for are? sure. Yeah, It ain't never been done before. I'm the first one to ever do it in the world. What kind of car is it? It's a dunk. It's a dunk. Oh, yeah. I'm the dunk master. You got and you don't know. Dunk. And you what? don't know what, and you're just not going to let us know nah, that. Nah, I can't not, today. Just, just keep looking on the news. You'll see I'm going to ask you another <laughs> question. What's the <laughs> most you ever betted on a race? The most I ever. Per, by myself, yeah, mm-hmm. by yourself. The most I ever bet by myself is twenty five thousand by myself. Bet it, yeah, bet it up. And what's the most you ever? Did you won? lose? No, nah, hell no. Nah, 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 don't nah, speed nah, pass. Nah, the most, the most you ever won. No, no, I won. The most <laughs> ever won was one hundred and sixty thousand. Wow. Yeah. By yourself? 
No, nah, I bet that was 25. Collective. Yeah, yeah. For, with the whole group, we bet 160,000. Yeah, y'all got some nerves, uh, man. Yeah, nah, Nuts big as, cojones big as this table. Yeah, Nigga, I'd have been nervous. <laughs> yeah, and I don't be nervous. <laughs> I would have been I nervous. What's the most you ever lost? The most ever lost? I probably lost 80,000. Yeah, eighty thousand. Wow, that's mm. the adrenaline rush of it. Oh yeah, you shoot dice too, don't you? I, you know I do. <laughs> These niggas hate your shit. You gotta shoot them dice, man. <laughs> <laughs> do you race horses, man? Nah, we do. My partners do. My partners are uh, Bruce and Boy. They don't need out the country. They race horses all the time. Yeah, they they stay racing horses. I, I, have hold on, I have this question though. With all the money that you've been making, mm -hmm. I know that you have to invest it. Mm -hmm. Tell me one thing that. Is your most lucrative investment that you do right now? Them cars, uh, yeah, really no. myself, really the really? brand, yeah. So like my brand is why why we got this deal with a cool. I'm about to get into that, but I heard something yeah. about you investing in oil or you did something with oil. Yeah, I is heard that, that true? too. Nah, we didn't do nothing with hey, that. Nah, oil. Oil. Do you oil. have your own oil? Nah, nah. Yeah, we oh, got see? we got different stuff like, but not our own. We got like detailer sprays and stuff like that coming out. But a lot of stuff I do. Maybe I it's coming in into brand. maybe it's, it's speaking into existence. Maybe oh, yeah. you're gonna buy an oil rig somewhere. You gonna own it? Hey, so a cool man. So I see you wearing. That's a dope outfit. Oh yeah. I just want to. I want to see. How, how did, did you happen? guys end up linking with a coup? So with a coup, the actual owner, Ralph Reynolds. That's my boy. Yeah. So don't Ralph play. Reynolds. Yeah. So That's he's my guy. Owner. So one night he was just sitting up uh, and and dunk messes on TV, and it woke him up out of sleep, and he just walked up and he seen it on TV, and he ended up watching all the episodes, and then after that he hit me in the DM. Like I got the DM from when he first hit me mm -hmm. about two years ago, like man, what's up? Give me a call, and I like who is this? You know what I'm saying? I'm looking at it. I sent it to my man Steve Mo. He like bro, that's the dude who owned a, a cool cool. RP55. That's right. I said for real. I said all right, bet. I hit him back. Steve Mo talked to him. We got on the phone. We talked about everything for a long time, and it, it was took it took. From that point, about two years to get where we at right now. Really? Yeah. So we was just kept talking back and forth. He'd be watching, checking on it. You know what I mean? Cool dude. The team is cool. It's solid. Mm -hmm. And that, and that's what it came. He's like, we want to do something with you. And we came up with a plan. And and now it's working. You know what I mean? I got a cool. I got a partnership. We go be in over 1,500 retail stores on websites. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We in Dillard's, Macy. No, Dillard's, uh, Jimmy Jazz, City yeah. City Gear, all yeah. that stuff like that. Right. Hibbets. Yeah. Yeah, so we all I know where you Oh, yeah. so, but how <laughs> was it for you the first time in Vegas at a magic show mm -hmm. with a coup? I liked it. You know what I mean? It was a good time. I met a lot of different mm -hmm. people. A lot you of met me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I was cutting up on you. I said, that nigga ain't going to do nothing. I said, man, that nigga ain't going to do nothing. Then I go over there. I said, I told my wife. She went over there first. She went over there first. I said, where do you talk to who? Yeah. said, the dunk, man. I said, he over there. Go talk to him. I said, he said his assistant going to. Man, I said, that nigga. I said, that nigga ain't going to do nothing. I got a lot of stuff going on. I got a lot of stuff going on. I got a lot of stuff going on. I got a lot of I got employees. I got meetings. I got all that stuff going on. I can't keep up with all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? But I had to know because I had to look through. I said, "Damn, man!" I went in there and talked to Jerry. I said, "Jerry, who that dude y'all got mm -hmm. over here with y'all?" I've been. You gotta realize, Ralph and us, we go back all the way to old. We been doing oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We really rock, like. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I say, "Man, who is this nigga? Y'all done got this nigga out of cool and everything." Yeah. You know the time they say, "Oh, he good," and you gotta go talk to him. He, uh -huh. I said, "I'm gonna go out and talk to him." But I, my wife, when he got managers, you ain't gonna yeah. be able to get to that nigga nah, right that's there. Like <laughs> but see, that was I appreciate the honesty and the truth. Cause that's what it is. Like a lot of people don't don't want a man up. You know what I'm saying? To right. say that. But that's Man. how it works. It's a system, you know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. how I operate it. And that's what I told him. I said, you know, because even like if we know you directly, because we yeah. deal with a lot of artists and a lot of people, lot of say, people. Yeah. and they'll say, okay, but still hit my manager up or, yeah. or my booking agent or whatever, yeah. because you have to go through certain roles to we get to keep you. That structure. Yeah. That structure. That's all it is. I respect it, but I still want a clown. So me, I'm, I'm out there with that foolishness. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, that, that ain't work. That ain't work. <laughs> Who's that guy with you? Where is he at? That's Steve Moe. That's my. That's the head of business. You tell that nigga to answer his phone, nigga. Yeah. I blow that nigga up. Do that. I say, oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I give you the direct line to my manager. He, he takes. I got right it back. now. He take, yeah. That's Gavin, yeah, right? He takes yeah. right back. Yeah, he on it. He on it. He on it. He on it. I don't know where you at now. Yeah, yeah. Gavin, where y'all at this week? <laughs> that's what we gotta do. That's do y'all ever go down to Houston? Nah, nah, yeah, we going. Uh, go we was gonna these. go, but we working on something else with that, so we go, we going there too. Yeah, yeah. So Houston had their own type of cars. The way how they, what they call it, swingers. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 They, they, them, they, they gonna break them yeah. damn uh, uh, Volvo's. What and you think about that style? I like it. You know, what I mean, it's different for everybody. You know, what I mean, it's different strokes for different folks. But I like the colors and the painting and the work they put into it. The pop trunks and the yeah, electric. yeah I, I like it. You know, what I'm saying I, I don't never hate on what somebody like because some people don't like what I do. Right. But you yeah. know, I mean, I I always appreciate the workmanship and stuff that goes. So when you travel to other cities, do other cities have their own 
style of cars too? Oh yeah, all over the place. And that's the thing about it, like with the big wheels only was in, in the South. So now it's all over the world. So like okay. I'm getting calls shit from Canada, from Mexico, from El Salvador. So we working on different cars from all over the country because they want that flavor and that style. Wow. You know what I'm saying? They they looking for me to, to give it to them and, and I'm, I'm going to deliver. But it's expensive to ship it overseas, isn't it? Oh yeah, but when you you mess with people like princes and, and different yeah. people like that, they don't like in Dubai different. and stuff. Yeah, like that. they you know what I mean. They, they got unlimited care. money. They got they trillions really of dollars. You know what I mean. Them boys shit in gold <laughs> toilets. So you know what I mean. It's, it's real. They got the you money. Right. It's out there and they make it happen. You Let know? me mm-hmm. ask you about the uh, what's the best rim to race on that you think. So the the wheels I race on is the Ruji wheels. Okay, and, you and just that, changed the name not too long ago. Yeah, didn't you? I, I had Ruji for a couple of years, but yeah. see, I have a lot of input on the manufacturer of the wheels. So okay. actually, on the wheels I have on my car is made of a different metal, so it's heat treated. So I actually heat treat the bolts and stuff that put the wheels together, and that's what I use. Okay, because yeah. that's a lot of times I was thinking, okay, how them rims gonna stand that that mm-hmm. that pressure? Yeah. It, it, have you ever seen anybody break rim, break axle, oh, yeah. break break yeah. bolt? You know, you come off that line mm-hmm. wrong and mess yourself up. I done did. It. Damn. But see, that's why I say I work with the companies close in the manufacturers, and I do a lot of R and D for them. So like FTI, who've been doing my transmission for the last ten years, they've manufactured me a transmission to torque converter to withstand twenty five hundred horsepower and five thousand pounds. And the same thing with Rucci and Moser, all the different companies I work closely with them, and I R and D a lot of stuff for a very long time. Yeah. Okay, explain level. to me because like the picture that I chose to put up on that flyer, uh-huh. I noticed that one of the lights are out. Yep. Why does? What does that do? So this one I had, uh, the turbo was directly behind that area. So in, in order to get a better airflow, I removed the headlight to get the, the turbo uh, straight airflow. And that's wow. why I had it like that at and that, that time. And that helps to get it faster. Yeah, so now I had to move the turbo over to the front so it's behind the grill now. So now we got the headlights back headlight in the car. Back in. What, yeah. Where's the best place to have it? it? Wherever you can get direct airflow. Wherever, you know what I mean? Just like if you're trying to breathe or anything, just make sure you got direct airflow so the turbo sucks the air in and that's okay. what makes the horsepower. Man, yeah. you one of them guys, man. Who is the best? Uh, and we about to wrap this up. Who the best? The driver. The the driver. Uh, the the best driver you you've ever seen. Don't say yourself, Nick. I know you're trying to. It's myself. Who you gonna say it, man? No, no, no. I'm talking okay, about who's the is. second best. So, so so no, hold on, oh. hold on. Let's ans- let's ask it like this. What's your top three drivers of all time, dead or alive? Oh, as far as racing, drivers racing, all together? All together. Well, I like, you know, as far as the highest level of racing, I like John Force for, like, the okay. NHRA race. Because mm-hmm. John Force mm-hmm. taught that trash, and he yeah. back it up, and he's been doing it for a long, long time. You know what I mean? As far as, as drag racing, it's, I don't have a whole bunch of them, but I know him, and then it was an old driver uh, back in the day called uh, Legend Killer. He had a grudge call that used to come from D.C. and come okay. out of South Carolina, Florida. He won a lot of money. <laughs> Um, as far as drag racing, yeah, I don't have a bunch. This name one, in, this name one in, in drag, and they're like regular racing. I like Dale Earnhardt for the yeah, regular. Yeah, everybody <laughs> like him. Everybody yeah. like yeah, him. Yeah, you know what I mean. For regular NASCAR racing, okay, stuff and like that, NDRA. But, yeah, for as far as NDRA stuff, I would say Boost Doctor. So it's an older fella named Boost Doctor who raced. Uh, shout out to Boost Doctor. He got a, a box Chevy out of North Carolina, mm-hmm. and he one of my rivals. Anytime we race, mm-hmm. it's a big crowd, a big commotion. If both of y'all race together. What? Oh, they love it. Because he talk a lot of trash. I talk a lot of trash. I done beat him. He done beat me. But then you would never know who going to win. That older man, how old is he? He probably in his 40s or 50s, something like that. That ain't old. He might Dang. be, but he might be older than that. But you know what I'm saying? He, he, he a country dude. <laughs> <laughs> he an old country fella. But you know what I'm saying? He, he Him and uh, Big Low out of Florida, he, he uh, a real good racer too. Is there a young driver that's coming up right now in the NDRA that we should look out for? Um, It's some... It's a... Uh, that you see uh, promise. Yeah, it's a fella named Turbo Stead. Shout out Turbo Stead, Steadman Wheels. He out of uh, North Carolina. He's mm-hmm. a young fella. He he looked like he looked pretty promising on coming pretty up promising. with something. Yep. Have any of them like reached out to you like man, ask for advice on Oh yeah, yeah, I talk to them all the time about different things. Yeah, I always I'm willing to help a lot of different people. I don't have no problem helping them. Uh, you know what I mean? They got questions or anything like that. I don't have no problem with none of that. Yeah, because even whenever you self Ralph DM'd you, I'm like, you know when somebody doesn't follow you or you don't follow them, that DM goes to that other side. Yep. And I'm like, oh well, he found that. So I mean you checking all your messages, even the junk mail too. So I'm like, that's good for He got to check it because he got too damn much money. Money might come through that thing. So busy. <laughs> I didn't challenge him in a heartbeat through oh, a DM. Yeah, yeah. But that's good. Though. We getting them challenges through the DM. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of will call you all out through the, the DM. United States, yeah. Wherever I'm at, so we put out a schedule every year and they figure out where we at. Did anybody in the D call you out yet? They always call me in out. Dallas. Everywhere. But yeah, you don't, but you don't go for and everyone. you go around here like you really just going to outrace I'll raise them. I'll raise them. I don't You'll beat them in their city. It, it done beat me one time. I beat them. But you know what I mean? We like to race. So you going to race tomorrow? Anybody from Dallas? Yeah, if you come out there with a car. 
That's all you gotta do. Come out there with a car. I'm gonna race him. Y'all heard that? I'm gonna get this uh, out tonight. Money. Nigga, we'll and be the out money. You gotta have the money. You gotta have the money. Well, man, we love you, brother. Thank you for coming on the show, man. How can people get a hold to you if they're trying to rock with you? Oh, yeah, so you go to my Instagram is one underscore dunk master. My Facebook is the dunk master. Or you can go to my website, ndrausa.com or in and out customs.com uh, and check it out. Uh, you know me, you can see me on uh, Motor Trend Vice, Dunk Master TV show. But yeah, that's about that's Man, about keep it. When are you coming out with your own movie or documentary? Dang, about there you? It is, we're there working it is. on it. We're working on it. We're still making life though. We still doing <laughs> something new every day, you know what I'm but saying? But you so making history with a lot of stuff. So crazy I'm like, history, I'm like yeah. okay, you need to you need to have an autobiography uh, or something. All you gotta do is go to Gito eight oh three and he got it from the very beginning. Beginning. So it's he going down. That's it. He don't know him, but we're gonna put it together when it when it's time. You know what I mean? Right now we still making history every day, so you guys right now it's pretty good. Is there anything we left out? Uh, nah, that y'all gonna be at the racetrack tomorrow to be yeah, showdown three. Do that? Oh, yeah, yeah, we yeah, showing that. We coming, on. man. Oh, yeah. I just we coming to win the last week. I'm coming with you too, nigga. Oh, yeah. We gonna figure this out. Oh, yeah. I'm excited. Put it together. <laughs> yeah, put it together. <laughs> you, you're excited? Yeah, because I've never been. Nigga, you better get out there and have fun. Don't bet no money this <laughs> for nothing. Just I'll talk to you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't put Don't your hand up. Let me see. Let me tell you how I, I'll do it. Right? I'm gonna be totally honest. I'm gonna tell you that I'm gonna bet, but I'm gonna bet some other stuff over here where you're not gonna know I'm gonna bet. So when I win that money over here, you ain't gonna know what about it. What if you it. lose that money, man? I then you still not here, gonna man. know about Say, it. Hey, man, thank you, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna tell you something, man. The Dunk Master been in here. He did his thing, man, on Boss Talk 101, oh, man. Yeah. Like I said, we ain't gonna never forget you. And, and we pulling up on South Carolina. We coming up there to do the show in your place. Oh, yeah. You gonna sure. let us come through? Oh, yeah, for I'm sure. I'm serious. I'm pulling I, up. I, I pulls up. I appreciate the opportunity. I man. did it in Vegas. Yeah, we traveled everywhere. We was interviewing that. I got my shop in South Carolina. I'm coming up there. You gonna let. I just. We went to. 1501, we come to your shop. Oh, We've yeah, never been to South Carolina. No, yet. we haven't. That's why I'm trying to get up there. I need to meet somebody. <laughs> Ask some rappers or somebody gonna oh, come see yeah. you. Do you have any entertainers, good entertainers out of South yeah, Carolina? Yeah, hey, all you, the this happening, That's baby. The, I like to make a phone call. Who is That's the hottest it. entertainer out of South Carolina? There's a lot of different entertainers up there. It's a bunch. That was like I got who? some in South Carolina and in Georgia. Who is the biggest? And the biggest in South Carolina? <laughs> see, I'm trying to think. Who, who would be the biggest one in South Carolina for y'all to do? See, I got a lot more in Georgia than South Carolina. See, though. that nigga be See, everywhere. He with everybody. I got, I got to sit down and think about it for a second. South <laughs> Carolina. just named all them niggas that he ain't. See, I got nigga? a couple of TV stars, a couple of movie stars. See, he don't want to say nobody because he know too damn many no, bodies. No, if, if he say somebody, then somebody might get mad yeah, and like, forgot about me. Man, man, see, I got a lot, though. I do. I, all you got to okay, do is call me. All right, we're going to up there and do it. Why? Just like you pull your stuff down here, we coming up there. That's all you got to do. Man, check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out.